Our number 11th of soul winning, the public ministry, and you can find the videos and the audio for lessons 1 through 10 on the YouTube and SoundCloud and other applications that we have over the internet. And today we're going to address the gospel. We're not going to do a review. We don't do the reviews because it's all on video and audio. So, 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to go out and have a public ministry, but what are we doing? Now, the Bible, Jesus Christ, says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. And Paul warns us that there's another gospel. So we've got to be quite sure what we believe, what we are teaching, is in concordance to what the Bible. Because we would not want to go out there and do a false gospel. And religions follow that way. There are people who will come to your door and bring a false gospel. And for born-again Bible-believing Christians that love the Lord Jesus Christ, we want to have the right gospel. In 1 Corinthians 15, 3, the gospel, part 1. For I deliver unto you, first of all, of all that which I also received. So Paul delivered what we're talking about, and he received what we're talking about. How that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Now, 2 Corinthians 11, 4 said... Paul warns us of another gospel. The true gospel is in three parts. And the first part is that Jesus Christ died for our sins. Okay. Well, Catholics believe that. According to the scriptures. And when you alienate the Catholic churches, they're not doing what the scriptures say to do. And that there are a sure prophecy of the first advent of Jesus Christ from his birth, his conception, his birth, to the resurrection. And being at the right hand of the Father. And all the steps that the prophecies speak about from his conception to the ascension to God the Father, Acts chapter 1 has to be 100%. For I deliver unto you first of all, this is the message that Paul gave to the church. Now, I'm not one of them people, Paul says it, boom, that's it. I'm not one of them. But Paul is the apostle, the Gentile. Paul is the messenger and writer to the church. And there are some aspects that we must follow Paul on. And the first aspect to make sure we do not have another gospel is that we're following what Paul has put forth in the scriptures by the Holy Spirit. And he says, that which I have received. Paul received the same gospel. The gospel that we are teaching today was received by Paul. And this was, the letter was written about 59 AD, thereabout. He says, that Jesus... That Christ, Jesus Christ, John chapter 3, Romans chapter 10, and Romans chapter 6. Scriptural. That Christ died. Matthew 27, 50 to 53. Mark 15, 37 to 38. Luke 23, 45 to 46. John 19, verse 30. All following one of the greatest chapters when it talks about Jesus Christ is Isaiah 53, excuse me, Isaiah 53, the suffering Messiah. And all through passages. That Jesus Christ died. There are many who teach or have taught he fainted. He passed out. No, he died. There are books out there that, you know, the resurrection was when they put the... Jesus Christ fainted, and when they put that body on that cold, rocky slab, oh, hi folks, how you doing? Here I am. And they bypassed the sealed tomb, they bypassed, 
and, you know, the women coming in the morning and Peter going in there and buying a napkin. And, it's a mess. That the salvation of Jesus Christ is by the gift of God. And that his son, Jesus Christ, died. Romans 6.23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And yet, for God so loved the world, John 3.16, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then the third point of this one verse about the, about the scriptures, about the gospel, is for our sins. The reason of the gospel is because we are sinners. And remember we talked about earlier, if a man will not acknowledge he's a sinner, you need not go any further. But if, he, if we are to this point witnessing, talking to a person, who has acknowledged their sins, who knows they are a sinner, then now we bring the gospel to them that Christ died according to the scriptures, that for our sins. Now that we're sinners, now that you're dealing with someone that is lost, we have a gospel. A gospel means good news, good tidings. Good news that person has come this far and say, hey, listen, I'm a sinner. What do I do? Now, don't you go this far the person does not acknowledge he's a sinner. The main word that we've been seeing so far in this study is believe. He has to believe now to this point. He's sinned. And if he is not a sinner, then why did Christ die? So, you don't give medicine to someone who doesn't need it. John 1 29. If a man goes to a doctor and the doctor says, this is your condition. And that man does not believe the doctor. All the prescriptions that doctor can write. All the tests and blood work and x-rays and hospitalization, whatever needs to be done for that illness. If that patient does not believe the doctor, not going to do nothing. So when we see Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 29, the next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and says, Behold the Lamb of God. That's that Lamb of the Passover night, the Exodus coming out of the world, which take away the sin of the world. Know the sin. It's not sins. And when we are in any public ministry, and we've got a sodomite, and we got a boozer, and we got a slappy uh, dress woman, and we don't point at her and say, you know, you're a harlot. We don't point at him and say, you're a boozer, you're a drunk. And we don't point at that sodomite, the wrath of God is upon you. All three of those people, you can combine them into one. You can have a sodomite who's a boozer who's dressing wrong. Sin. There are never degrees of sin. And the most common sin to all man is the false witness. Thou shalt not bear false witness. What is that? Everybody is lied. The assumption is too, another sin is everybody has stolen something. Somewhere in our childhood, we have taken something our parents told us not to take. We have stolen a pen or something. Unawares. And yet we're still sinners. So that person we're dealing with, we're bringing them the gospel. Now we brought them to Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin in the world. Then when we're dealing with that person, you say, I don't need to know. Maybe they come from the Catholic Church, you know, they confess to a man. No, we, I don't need to know, but you take all the sins that you acknowledge in your lifetime, and you would say, sins you would say you know i've not given god the credit i have had idolatry i have not honored the lord maybe i'll use his name in vain 
uh, I've stolen, I've looked upon a woman that committed adultery, I've coveted things, I've lied. And you would say that's all sins. The big ten. And yet we're to explain to him that the Lamb of God takes all those sins. Whether good sins, bad sins, wicked sins, abominational sins, or little tiny sins. The Lamb of God is able to take away the sin of the world. The sin of that person. That's the reason why Christ died for us. Now Christ died for the nation of Israel. Christ came on his own. His own received us not. But being in the church age today. And when you're dealing with that man in front of you. We don't need to get into Israel. We don't need to get into tribulation. We need to get the fact is that this guy has knowledge he's a sinner. And we've come this far into the gospel to say. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's take all your sins into one. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And that Lamb of God, John says, is Jesus. Are you able to believe right now that Jesus Christ, prescribed by John the Baptist, prescribed by the Scriptures and Paul, what we read so far, that Jesus Christ has died? And if you get a yes, we can move further. And if you can get, even I think so, I'm not really sure if he can take away my sin, we still can go further he has not outright said, no, I don't believe Jesus died. At that point, I don't believe Jesus died. you got to close the door because what's the first phrase of the gospel? Jesus died. If you don't believe that, you're not going to get saved. Now, you may show scriptures of him. You may have read the passages in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But you got to come out with a strong belief for the first part of the gospel in order to go down the Romans road. The first place now you take a sinner is you bring him to Calvary. Here we are. We are standing at Calvary. There's the cross. There's a dying thief. There's a dying thief. One of them thieves repented and got right by Jesus Christ. And there is Jesus Christ in the middle. Suffering and dying. That our sins may be taken away. Taken on the wrath of God. Isaiah 53. Do you believe that? Yes. You keep going. No. You maybe go a little further. But there is no belief in the cross. And there is no belief of Jesus Christ. You can't go no further. Now, you see. And I don't want to make it formistic. I don't want to make it a diagram. But we are in the point is. Alright. Here is the thing. I don't mention right now. Christ died on the cross. Does he believe it or does he believe it? Yes or no? No? Well, you can go a little more steps. But the answer is still no, you're not going anywhere. And if he says, yes, I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross. All right, yes, now we got two more. Now we got to show him. You know, you believe you're a sinner, correct? Yes. Now we're going to look at Christ able to forgive your sin. We go back, you know, Christ died on the cross. Yeah. Do you believe you're a sinner? No. Well, now you got to go other avenues. We cannot go this road to easy believism and make a mark. Oh, we got someone who said a prayer. Now, it does not drag out into 11 points as we're doing right now. The day I got saved, I know there was an open Bible. I know he showed me there was a hell. He showed me that there was a Savior. It's Jesus Christ. And I believe, 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 believe. At not one point did I say, well, wait a minute. I'm not, I don't believe that. There may have been some times I said I was unsure. And then it would be, he would explain to me more. So now we come to the gospel. We, Christ died. Christ is Jesus Christ. He can take away the sin of the world. 1 John 3, 5. And everybody's different. You may deal with someone who has no religious background at all. Zilch. You may have somebody somewhere in their life has been atheism. Somewhere in their life has been Catholicism. Somewhere in their life maybe Jehovah Witnessism, Mormonism, or... Lutherism or whatever the religions are 
Maybe he's been brought up in scientific home. Maybe he's been brought up in an educated home. Maybe brought up in a home they never knew Jesus Christ. And no person is going to be the same. You may have somebody, wow, yeah, I believe that. Yeah, I was brought up in that. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. You may have somebody come along and say, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Could you show me more? I kind of get it. I need a little more. And you may get people, no, absolutely not. You're a fool. <laughs> you believe that, you know, and then boom. So with the gospel, First John 3, 5. And ye know that, see, ye, you know. That person you're dealing with does not know. He's not saved. You know, I hope you know. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Okay. Explain to him. Listen, on such and such day, a man or woman talked to me like I'm talking to you right now. I didn't know anything. Like, I don't know how much you know, but as far as Jesus Christ, no, I just knew the Christmas carol. That's all I knew. But I came to the, to the knowledge of Calvary. I came to the knowledge that Jesus Christ is able to watch me in my sins. And today I can read this verse. And know, ye know that he was manifested to take away the sin. And in him is no sin. And if you're going this far to know that he is able to take away the sin. And now we got another fact. Christ never sinned. Christ Jesus, 100% man, 100% God. Being 100% God, 100% man of the God. No sin. Now see, now we got to get him to... Christ completely, absolutely never sinned, as we sin. That the means of God, the way, the truth, and the life is the one who has never had sin. And yet, he had eyes to see. He had a mouth to speak. He had a neck that turned. He had ears that, that heard. He had hands that touched. He had feet that walked. He got sleepy. He cried. He hungered. He thirsted. He suffered on that cross. And yet, on that cross without sin, he died and was placed on that cross for nothing that he had done. Isaiah 53, it is all what we have done. We're moving along. And the verses I'm giving you right now, you may not, he may look at that verse right there. And, you know what? I'm a sinner. The only way by Jesus Christ, I mean, the only way for me to get out of hell to go to heaven is by Jesus Christ who died on that cross. He's perfect. He's God. He's able to save my soul. Can I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior right now? At that point, if he's got it, he's acknowledged it. Let him pray. Now, there's been times I, I've, I've helped someone pray. There are a few people that I, the Lord has used me for the watering, and God's given an increase. And, well, and I say something, Lord God, help this man. He, he wants to believe on you. And let him speak from his heart, Lord. Something like that. And then tap him on the shoulder and let him go. And let him go. And if they cuss and, and swear and, and, well, listen, they don't know any better. Let that man come to Christ. And if he were to start naming off his sins, just don't hear it. Let God hear it. And when, they, when they're up, did you really believe what you just prayed? Did you really, from your heart, ask God to save you? There may be some people you're dealing with, they need more. We're going to move on more. Galatians 1.4 I am against say this prayer, easy believism. I'd rather have a guy walk away from me not saved 
then have a guy walk away from me thinking he saved me and never got saved. Now, I believe sometimes, as we're doing the Gospel of Galatians 1, 4, and the question comes to salvation. My grandma antagonized me to go to church. I went to a church, her church, a Baptist church, Sunday morning, at whatever the dates are. And I heard the gospel for the very first time in my life, how that preaching. And I left, went home, and I don't know if I went to church that night or not. I don't remember that. But I know during that week, I knew there was something wrong with my life. I knew that I had angered God, and I knew I was going to hell. And during that week, I called my grandma and said, you know what, I need somebody from that church to contact me. I need to talk to somebody. I need to get saved. And the process of time, grandma called me up and said, listen, the guys will come Saturday, the next Saturday, over my house in the afternoon, come over and they'll, they'll talk to you. And Joe Whitmore opened the Bible and showed me. And I don't remember exactly what happened. And I did not want to go to hell. And I knelt down and I asked Jesus Christ to save me. Now, did I get saved that Saturday afternoon? Or did I get saved during the week when I said, Lord God, I need you. I don't want to go to hell. And I want to trust in Jesus Christ. I don't know what to do. I'm going to call... I'm going to call my grandma and find out somebody come talk to me. But I want to know what to do. Did I get saved at that point? And then later on, three or four days later, with an open Bible, I asked Jesus Christ outright as witnesses. Listen, what I'm trying to say is they may not have to bow down before you in the assembly to trust Christ if I send them away with the gospel and their heart has already believed and kept believing and they're thirsting and hungering after righteousness, they'll get saved if they've not already gotten saved. You see, someone can get saved by their bed, kneeling down, sitting down, laying down, with no one in that room, crying out to God for mercy and grace. They don't want to go to hell, and Jesus Christ saved them. You may have led them to that in their bedroom from that day, or in their car, or wherever. But I do not ever want to be accused of, you led this guy into this prayer that he really did not believe what he was praying. He had no idea what he was praying, and I'm going to cast him off in the lake of hell forever because you would not spend the time or you were so impatient. We're dealing with different kinds of people all over this world when we're witnessing. And like I said, you may not have to go this route. I'm doing this route to the fullest so you can get the fullest on dealing with lost souls. And you may have someone who is quick and ready. Someone has planted a seed and you're watering and God's given an increase. Someone may have planted a seed, you're watering, and God will give the increase later. You may be just planting a seed now. My wife has a garden outside and she plants bulbs and seeds and planting. I've never seen her go out in that garden and take that thing she's just put in the ground, pull it, stretch it out. It ain't going to work. It causes death to that plant. So Galatians 1 4. To whom, oh wait a minute, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. So, the gospel, the death of Jesus is he gave himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The gospel is that God and Jesus Christ has given. For what? That we might deliver us, that he might be able to deliver us from this present evil world. For the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That whosoever believes him should not perish. 
but have everlasting life. We are there because we don't want them to go to hell. Don't you dare ever to be there on a, on a public ministry because you have a notch. Your church can say, look at the numbers of people that said this prayer. Don't you dare go out and do that mess. You go out there with the love that people are dying and going to hell. And Jesus Christ and God the Father love enough. They gave this charity for the lost men. Now the next place, Isaiah 53 that we've been talking about. Isaiah 53. This is all to be <clears throat> in the back of your mind. So, <clears throat> excuse me. In the back of your mind, Isaiah 53. You don't need to, need to quote the whole verse, the chapter. But no, Isaiah 53, know that. Because this is the suffering of Jesus Christ. It's about Jesus Christ. And rest assured, it's about Jesus Christ. And if you were to deal with a Jew, be realized, if you were to open up Isaiah 53 and read it to that Jew, they will say that it is them. And the persecutor of them in this chapter is us Gentiles. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. See it again. Our sins have been laid upon Jesus. He was bruised for our iniquity, transgressions, iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now at this moment, you may have to go over to the Gospels and show that he was whipped. Show that he was beaten. Show the, thro the thorns upon his brow. Go to the scripture where it says they pulled the beard out of his face. They plowed his back as a farmer would plow the ground. You may have to go far to show that. But Isaiah 53, realize transgressions, iniquities, chastisement, stripes, the, the whips, the cat and nine tails upon the body of Jesus Christ because of us. Remember, sir, remember, ma'am, he was sinless. He need not suffer. But why did he suffer? Because we are the sinner. Now, now, if you got somebody this far, you brought them down. And that moment, they, they may be in tears already. Titus chapter 2, verse 14. And when you're presenting the gospel to somebody, and you, you know, you knock on their door, hi, how you doing? Oh, good. Uh, can we talk to you about, can we bring to you or talk to you about Jesus Christ? Well, we got an appointment in, we got to leave in 15 minutes. That's not the time to break out the Bible and start saying, okay, let's do it. that will be like, well, can I leave you a gospel track? Can I leave you this information about Jesus? Can we make a time when we can come and present the gospel to you? Uh... Can we call you, get your phone number, or can you call us? You're not going to be able to do this in 15 minutes. Now, some cases, if God's prepared that heart, Titus 2.14, I'm trying to give you the reasons, not to hurry into it. I'm trying to give you the no excuse of easy believism that I am so against. I am want to make sure that this soul knows what he's doing. That when he does do that prayer, when he does seek God, when he is that lost sheep that God searches out and is using you, that when he bows his head, when he asks of his heart that Jesus to save his soul, God is ready with the pen to write his name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. The angels are piping up, are ready to start. Hooray! Hallelujah! A sinner has come home. I don't want the point to say, oh, you ready to say this prayer? Get ready. Here we go. Say this prayer. And God smacks himself in the head and says, I don't believe he's going to do this. I don't believe. No. He has become a deceiver, a false 
teach it. Now, maybe I'm going too much into it, but I want the assurity that that person is doing what he knows what he's doing. Titus 2.14, who gave himself for us. Now, you see that one right there? That puts you and him together. The person you're dealing with. Listen, I'm a sinner too. I was a sinner just like you, condemning going down. I'm a safe sinner now. I still sin. Receiving Christ as my Savior has not stopped me from sinning. And you can say 1 John 1 9, if you say, well, what do you do? But us, all mankind, for God so loved the world, that's us, that he might redeem by us back, by us, redeem us from iniquity, remember Isaiah 53, and purify, remember Isaiah 53, the chastisement of our peace, purify unto himself a particular people zealous of good works you say oh works to save you no that comes that comes after but the work has already been done the gospel that christ died for our sin the sinless christ has died for our sin the christ has taken our our iniquity has taken our our sin that was bruised that was that was whipped that was put upon the thorns upon his head that was nailed to that cross being sinless but because I'm the sinner now again if they don't believe they are a sinner at this point they don't believe that Jesus can atone for their sins there is no absolutely not salvation and he can say all the prayers he wants, but if he does not believe, there is no salvation. He must believe, the Bible says. And let's take a look here at some scriptures. Genesis 3.15, and I wouldn't go this road, but you may have to careful. But for us, who are grown in the word, Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity, hatred, between thee, the serpent, and the woman, between thy seed, the serpent seed, and her seed, she don't have a seed. That's the virgin birth right there of Jesus Christ. That seed, her seed, thy seed is Satan, the Antichrist, her seed is Christ, Jesus. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. There already, here we go, prophecy. I don't even know how long Adam and Eve been in the garden, how long they, they've sinned by taking that, that fruit, but here they are. Up comes the prophecy of Jesus Christ. Psalm 22. And that, Genesis 3.15 is really more of advance for our learning. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Show them over there in the gospel. That's Jesus Christ calling out to God that when that sin came upon Jesus, when that iniquity came upon Jesus, when our sins were on Jesus, God turned his back, turned out the lights. He can't see his son with the sin. Why art thou far from me from helping me? Because of sin. Not his sin our sin and from the words of my worrying and you go into this whole chapter if you need to go into this whole chapter this is jesus christ upon the cross the crucifixion really want to make it home and dear to them to their ears if there's time with the gospel daniel 9:26 these are just references. Well, this this whole study is references because who knows how far or how short you come. Daniel 9, 26. And after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof. Jesus Christ died, suffered, and died. 
He's not here. He's not been here. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And since then, 70 AD, the Jewish temple has been destroyed. Jerusalem was taken over by Titus because they rejected their Messiah. Prophecy. Prophecy. Zechariah 13, 7. Yeah, Zechariah 13, 7. And this is just, again, this extra. Awake, awake, I'm excuse me, awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep be scattered. Matthew 26, 31, that's prophecy. That's when Jesus Christ was taken in the Garden of Gethsemane, and all the disciples, pew, ran away. That's prophecy. We talked about prophecy. I'm going to say what, this is 9, 487 B.C. Over 500 years before, after Zechariah wrote this, this prophecy happened. 500 years before Jesus Christ was in the garden, it was written about that his disciples would leave him. Again, Isaiah 53, Luke 24, 26, and 46. But don't ever go the short route when it comes to witnessing. Be patient. Be assured that that person knows what they're doing. That person is aware because if there's any part of that gospel that's not believed, Their name may not be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'm giving this warning for the fact is, I have dealt with people who have said a prayer, and they told me, I said this prayer. And then you ask them, and I've asked them, well, tell me your testimony how you got saved. I had one guy tell me, from his heart, I won't tell you where or when, that guy told me he was saved based upon the preacher prayed for him. The preacher talked to him, and that moment when that guy was the big call on Christ to save him, the preacher did it for him. That guy, unless he ever turned to repent and got right and believed on God, but if he'd never done that, that guy is going to go to the lake of fire believing his preacher done what he should have done. And woe be to that preacher who has not had a study like this one. Now next time, Lord willing, we're going to pick up part two and three of the gospel. The first very part of the gospel is part one. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. I hope this is working. I hope I'm not exhausting. But I hope I'm giving you ideas and I hope I'm giving you a lead. I hope I'm warning you enough. And these videos and the audios are completely free for you. And if you misuse them and you overtake them, that's between you and God and the devil. But I will allow you to distribute these anywhere and everywhere for the glory of Jesus Christ and God the Father that people may get saved and their names put down in the Lamb's Book of Life. You don't need my permission. Now again, if you alter and, and change, you know, that's between you and God. There's original out there. And they're not copyrighted. I'm not going to copyright the work. I'm going to let it get out there. And if I don't get the credit, may the Lord Jesus Christ get the credit. For the love and glory of Jesus Christ, I pray. Please, get these out. 